Where do you go to get your hair cut? I don't know. I never go to the same place. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So I asked my mom, and then I went to her hairstylist because she cuts curly hair. And, like, while I was there, I was like, am I just going to have the exact same hairstyle as my mom? Am I turning into my f***ing mom? Welcome to the Coven Slumber Party with Ray of 5 by 5 and Sarah of Calling Corners, where we break down and geek out over the witchy, magical, and mystical media of the 80s, 90s, and more, and try and fill the video store-shaped holes in our hearts. <laughs> Welcome to episode 7 of the Coven Slumber Party. We are now officially into the holiday season, and we are celebrating by talking about a movie that has nothing to do with the holidays whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Witches of Eastwick from 1987. The first thing that we want to say is that we have some great news, which is we're officially available on iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher for your podcast listening. If you have found us through any of those, thank you so much for clicking on us, giving us a chance, and joining the slumber party. Even if you decide you want to call your mom to pick you up early. No problem. We are just happy to have you here. Prior to now, we were available on YouTube and still are. And our YouTube video description for each episode is where you can find our show notes not that there's many notes but if you're looking for those things you can find them there this movie doesn't even take place in like winter or anything there's like nothing to connect it i know oh, oh well that's how we roll they love the well it's like they asked for a gift of the, a man and it was delivered like santa claus nope no nope. it's pretty bad that's pretty bad <laughs> square hole circular pig i don't know yeah. but i don't know how you say that circular peg <laughs> i don't i think you just made it like fancier circular peg i like it though. what is it i don't know actually what it what square that... peg round hole <laughs> i think i like yours better hey close enough close enough <laughs> yeah a mismatch of shapes <laughs> well since this movie doesn't really have much to do with the holidays and this is kind of our holiday episode i wanted to ask you what holiday movies you like to watch uh or if you oh. watch a particular holiday film this time oh my god like all of them oh yeah all i watch like every single one i can get my hands on do you <laughs> yeah what are your faves faves for me like probably number one is scrooged mm -hmm. like bill murray's scrooged right it's a masterpiece he's amazing i like you laugh you cry it's a beautiful film white christmas also because it's just so beautiful and it's just so beautiful yeah and it's a wonderful life for sure those are like my like go-to's i also do love die hard it's like so much fun it's such <laughs> a great movie yeah there's so many i watch but those are for sure ones that i have to or else i feel like i missed you know i missed out yeah. what about you I was thinking about this too because I was really curious about what yours were and I thought about what mine were and I was like I've always s said it was Hook but I don't I don't know if that actually is a Christmas movie like it legitimately is that is also one on my list okay. because it happens at Christmas it is legit Christmas movie yes 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 because they go home at Christmas time for the holidays okay thank you because I wasn't sure and I yep. was like all my life I've said Hook is my favorite Christmas movie. I watch it every year this time. But then I'm like, am I just making that up? Is it not even a Christmas movie? If everyone's saying Die Hard is a Christmas movie, Hook is just as much of a Christmas movie as Die Hard. Absolutely. Perfect. And Gremlins. And Gremlins. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Also on my list. Classic. <laughs> I forgot. I always used to have a thing where I do like Christmas shows in the city. Right. And then like the last one that I did, I'd always go to Burrito Jack's. Oh my God. I miss the flavor in my mouth right now. My mouth is watering. But I'd get their Jack's chicken burrito that's like the size of a baby. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd bring it home and watch Black Christmas and eat a burrito and, like, immediately pass out. And it was, like, the best tradition that I, I started. It was so nice. That sounds amazing. Because, yeah. like, Black Christmas, again, amazing movie. Perfect Christmas yeah. movie. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I actually watched um, on Shudder, who is my surrogate mother at this point, I would say. I watched... Uh, a movie on it recently, a 2010 movie from Finland called Rare Exports, A Christmas Tale. Did you ever no. see it? It's so fun. Yeah. It's like, it's so fun. It's so fun. It's a really interesting, like, perspective, but it's just like a really cute holiday 
horror film kind of kind of like um the same energy as gremlins okay on. like like not not in not tone of the movie but the same it gives me the same feels okay. in the art. yeah they're much different movies but i yeah. like that that's cool it gets you in the mood i just i never really watched national lampoon's christmas vacation like growing yeah. up it was just in the past three years or something. I watched it for the first time and I was like, this movie is amazing. How did I not watch it before? Um, so yeah. Now I just want to like list them all. I'm like, Ooh. I know there's so many good ones. The Charlie Brown Christmas one is just like visually like that stayed in my brain since I was saw I saw it when I was like five I just think it's one of the most beautiful things that Christmas tree lot oof right. where he's like oh these are all fake aluminum trees and he's so filled with hate and he's like let's just get a real tree I would have taken every single one of those beauties home that's sweet oh my gosh we used to have these um VHS recordings of the holiday specials when I was mm -hmm. a kid and we had them for so long. It was so awesome because they also, my parents, since they hit record and recorded all of these yeah. holiday specials, we have these great like commercials like for holiday meals from like McDonald's. Like, oh my God. Yeah. Swiss Chalet. But from like 1989. <laughs> yeah. 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 You saying that just reminded me, I have a whole bunch of old 30s and 40s cartoon, like random old school, no name cartoon medleys. And I used to watch them when I was younger and they were like really creepy. Like the Christmas ones were really creepy. So I feel like I should pull them out and rewatch them this year. There's one where a snowman like melts, but it's animated in the most terrifying way. He falls through ice while figure skating and he just melts and like gets skinny and weird, but he's still figure skating. And I remember watching it when I was younger and I was like, I'm not okay with this. <laughs> but I like, I just like let it happen. I wasn't like mom or like press stop. I just was like, right. oh, just like etch into my brain, I guess. <laughs> so I'm 35 and I still know exactly what it looks like. So that's the thing. Those scarring Christmas memories. Very merry. Aside from movies, do you, does your family do like any traditions? Like how does your holiday? usually work typically i guess we like meet up on christmas eve with everybody and we kind of have snacks and stuff we do the christmas eve thing and then we all have little christmases at our house and my mom and dad like go and visit all the kids and stuff and then we meet up again later for christmas dinner right we just started doing like a yankee swap thing for like adults so that was kind of, that's kind of fun but nice. there's not nothing too outrageous i guess yeah, yeah, ours is pretty yeah. low-key, too. But I'm stoked because I get a lasagna because I'm the weirdo that doesn't eat meat, really. So yeah. so they make me, like, a vegetarian lasagna, which everyone else is grossed out by, so I, like, get to consume the entire thing. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> every year. So I look forward to that. And Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then I was thinking, um, in years past, we uh, when we had more cousins that were closer and stuff, I had a really mm -hmm. um, close cousin of mine. I think you probably met her, Siobhan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Siobhan's awesome. Yeah, she's rad. When we were younger and we were kids and teenagers and stuff, she'd come over and we'd just watch, like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 in my room and just, like, do that until, like... That was our Christmas. Yeah. yeah it was awesome. <laughs> so that was really fun. I miss those days. But, yeah, we oh. we're pretty low-key. I did have one more question for you, just as it pertains to 5 by 5 Yeah. So, of course, you run and are the maker behind 5 by 5 Yes. Which is shop5by5.com. Yeah. So it's different for you this year, <laughs> and you kind of mentioned yeah. it. I don't know if it'll make the mm -hmm. podcast, but if it doesn't. So this year is different for you, because usually you're doing holiday shows, holiday crafting mm -hmm. shows, holiday geek shows, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So so what does it look like this year for you, and like what new goodies have you produced? Oh, man. It's like completely different. I've made a lot of stuff and then just never listed it, and now it's too late to list them. So, <laughs> which is like always my problem so I have like so many soaps and candles that are so cool <laughs> so what are your favorite stuff you've made I, even if even if you haven't posted it just in case anyone... um well I posted some pictures of stuff I wanted to do like this whole series of soaps inspired by Christmas movies and I only got three of them done one of them was like a home alone soap if you look on like the title it has that little house you know with like the one little window in it so that's the shape of the soap it's that and I put a little window in it so it glows in the dark cute. It's super cute yeah but they're just gonna sit in my studio <laughs> now I guess oh oh un unless anyone wants them because then they oh, can yeah. message you 
Yeah, and that's a thing. And also, and I'll probably mention this again later. I will mention this again later. But we have our email address now. So it's just um, a Gmail address. But like people can email us there and ask questions. So if, if you hear Ray talk about anything that you want. <laughs> yeah. Just you can go there. Or you can go to her. Well, you, never mind. Go there because she didn't post the stuff on her <laughs> website. Yeah, it's just in a stack in my like I made those really cool blockbuster inspired patches is like that I say love no, those. No, the salad days they're just sitting over there so oh those are so cool well it's just like there's a lot of stuff happening this year that change a lot of stuff but then also like there's no shows yeah so I'm definitely one of those people that work best when I have completely unmanageable expectations <laughs> and like 18 things to do so not having shows and stuff this year kind of threw my normal making off and my normal flow right so um yeah and did Christmas. you have holiday candles or something too I saw something yeah I did because I'm trying to do offer different sizes and price points for certain things just because some of my prayer candles can be a little expensive but they have to be that price of price unfortunately of course that's the way it goes. so I made like smaller I know it sucks like I wish I could do things for less but same. I can't cause... yeah I hear you yeah <laughs> no same with us I hear you yeah so I did some smaller candles about half the size they still come with like lids and stuff but I had just printed off some like movie quotes and stuff from like Christmas movies that I really like and they smell really good but again they're sitting in my studio <laughs> what what are the Christmas movies I actually have two for Christmas vacation nice one is uh, my favorite part in the movie where like Margo and Todd are arguing it's like why is the carpet wet tad you don't know margo my favorite one. Oh no i have three from national lampoon's christmas vacation holy like the hallelujah holy shit where's the tylenol pretty full lots of sap they all smell like Christmassy. Obviously, that one smells like a tree, Christmas yeah. tree. <laughs> <laughs> I have one from It's a Wonderful Life that just says Zuzu's Petals. And I didn't think anyone was going to understand it, but I put it up and someone was like, Ah, oh, Zuzu's Petals! Oh, that's awesome. It's like my favorite thing he says in the whole movie, which is kind of shitty to say because he has some beautiful lines and like some really good scenes. But when he just says Zuzu's Petals, just something about Jimmy Stewart saying it. There's a diehard one, like when he's in the vent and he's like, come out to the coast, we'll get some dinner, have a laugh. You know, just sitting in my studio by myself. What does that smell like? That one it actually smells amazing. The scent's like Victorian Christmas, so it has like a lot of really nice deep pine and fir and then some really nice spices, like a little bit of orange and cinnamon and nutmeg oh, nice. and stuff. It is so beautiful. Cool, cool. So. so they're not on your website, but you did post them on your social media because I did see yeah. some of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so if you're listening to this, this should be out on December 18th. Mm -hmm. You can either email us at our email, thecovenslumberparty at gmail.com, or you can message <laughs> Ray on her yes. 5 by 5 Instagram. Yeah, either way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, let's jump into our holiday, uh, our, our non-holiday yeah. film we're featuring, which again is Witches of Eastwick from 1987. So this is one of your favorite movies, yeah? Yes. It's so great. Yeah. How did you discover it? When did it come into your life? I think I was probably like early 20s it was in university and I watched it and was completely like wow we wow wow what did I just watch I'm sure I watched part of it before you know like Peachtree or TBS or whatever it was probably on and I saw bits of it and I was like when I was younger and was like yeah confused but yeah late teens early 20s cool for sure it's been one of my go-tos and I like but it's really hard to find like it's not on any of the streaming things that I have like it's not on prime or netflix or crave or anything yeah so I don't know how did you even watch this I bought it on youtube oh okay for right. for like uh I, I think it was like four or five bucks um, okay that's not crazy no it wasn't uh it wasn't crazy it chapter two was like 14 and but the craft was like your firstborn like yeah <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah it was expensive yeah. for sure this was one of my like i have a collection of vhs witchy tapes so the craft and practical magic were like very hard for me to find but i can't believe i actually own a copy of witches of eastwick i feel like that's something that people don't 
ever get rid of. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I have like a little shrine of them by my movies. Like That's these so are cool. my weird witchy movies. That's awesome. I feel like this very much is in the same awkward zone as Practical Magic where you're like, what even is this movie? What genre is this? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't know. No, neither do I. Witchy, funny, fantasy. Wacky. There's a couple of scenes that are really gross and make me feel weird. Okay, you know? I think so. one of them might be my favorite scenes in the movie because I took a note of my... F- I was like, this is my favorite scene. And then when I was doing research, everyone's like, this scene is so gory and traumatic. And I was like, I'm the first one to cringe at gory and traumatic. And I mm-hmm. also loved that scene. I don't know. But like I saw it, <laughs> I was, I saw it on a list with stuff like martyrs and like all this. All, yeah. And I was like, really? If it's the scene that I'm thinking of, I love it. But sometimes I'm, I'm, I get triggered. <laughs> like today, especially when we were watching it, I had to look away because <laughs> I was like, not messing with that today. But it's so good. I knew about the title of this movie bef- long before I knew it was a movie. I think the first time I heard about it was Skeet Ulrich. His character in The Craft makes some reference to the girls being- The like, Bitches the- of Eastwick. Yeah. 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 That's the first I yeah. ever heard of it at all in any sort of context. And I think I first watched it probably like mm-hmm. in full, like this year or last year, like oh, wow. very late in the game. Yeah. So uh, I'm assuming it's a it's a thumbs up from you. Yeah, yeah. I liked it a lot. I liked okay. it a lot. That's nice. Yeah, it was in. It was really cool. I'll probably watch it it's... a few times a year. I think it's a good one to go back to. I usually have Sunday mornings as typically get up early and I do stuff that just like I like to do. Uh, while, while tall guys just like snooze and I'll pop in a movie and like do a craft or whatever. And this is for sure always on my pile right, right beside the tape player. Always in rotation. I, I rewatch movies a lot like that too. I've been rewatching Scare Me, which is that cute little comedy uh, horror. It's so good. But yeah, I do that too. I just sort of like do the same thing. Yeah. Rewatch, rewatch. Yeah. Hanging it with friends, right? I mean, I don't, that probably sounds so pathetic, but it's like time to pop in my friends. Uh, probably to everyone else, but like whatever. You don't know our lives. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, but yeah, I, I cannot count how many times I've watched Clueless in my life. Or The Burbs. The Burbs. That is like my yeah. go to for sure. If I'm like, in a good mood, a bad mood. I want to get scared. I want to laugh. It's like, put the burbs in. It really is like a perfect medicine for any occasion. The Witches of Eastwick. So although it's a questionable genre, <laughs> <laughs> The Witches of Eastwick is a comedy, fantasy, horror, a genre hybrid we seem to keep coming back to mm-hmm. from 1987. So it was directed by George Miller, who uh, basically had a hand in directing all of the Mad Max movies. Yeah, he like wrote and directed them all. And yeah. then also Babe uh, <laughs> Babe 2, Pig in the City, Happy Feet, and Happy Feet 2. <laughs> you know, as you do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember when I was looking it up, I was like, this is uh, polar opposite. <laughs> but okay, mister. So we have Jack Nicholson as Daryl Van Horn, Susan Sarandon as Jane. Michelle Pfeiffer as Suki and Cher as Alex. All perfect. All perfect. Like, what an amazing cast. This cast is insanity. It's stupidly good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I wrote a summary that I hoped would be more in depth than the IMDB, but do you wanna do you wanna give us the IMDB? Three single women in a picturesque village have their wishes granted at a cost. When a mysterious and flamboyant man arrives in their lives. Got it. That's actually pretty good for IMDb. Yeah, actually. If you're not familiar with the movie uh, and you need a little more meat on your summary, three best friends, all once married, connect to commiserate about their loneliness, inability to fit in with people in their town, how their work is undervalued, and an inability to find fulfilling love. On one of their usual Thursday night get-togethers, they unintentionally conjure the perfect man, which I'm totally quoting. Right, their, same. Uh, <laughs> question mark? Um, by yeah. way of Nicholson's devilish Daryl Van Horn, arriving in the night to their town and purchasing the insane local ma- mansion. Once each of the three meets this charming, also question mark, <laughs> magic man, They are each seduced and sexually liberated, stepping into their power, seemingly amplified by Daryl's otherworldly presence. However, when things get too hairy, 
and their town begins to turn on the women. They must figure out a way to take back their power and use it against the man that introduced them to it in the first place. A battle of the sexes, a battle of good and evil, and a battle between who can steal the scene best, Nicholson or Cher. <gasps> Shit! I want to say Cher, but... I know, it's hard to say. Yeah, okay, I love that you said that. That's great. I wanted to just go flashback for a second to Veronica Cartwright, because she is amazing. She's also in the movie. I guess she plays Felicia Alden. So... Oh, the wife of the newspaper yeah. man. Who, who yeah. the newspaper uh, owners, uh, what's his name? Richard Jenkins. I love him. Yeah. And the only thing I was like, he was in the shape of water and cabin, cabin in the woods. Yeah. That's all I care about also. That's all I care about. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But Felicia Alden was in Alien. She played Lambert in Alien. And so I will forever always have a spot in my heart for her. Also in like the uh, remake of the Invasion of the Body Snatchers. She's just so great. I love her face. She's like a blonde Shelley Duvall to me. Right. She's great. And I love her performance as Felicia in this movie. It's good. Everyone has it cranked up to 100, and they are just full steam ahead. Oh, like my God, leaning yeah. into everything. It's yeah. so great to watch. Yeah. It is. Even, even um, just you saying that, you know whose performance I loved was mm. the old woman that owns uh, the Yapping Fox, like, shop that sells uh shares that's what i wrote i was like everyone is so great in this movie i made a note because i was like even her performance is brilliant i know it so yes. is i was so impressed she <laughs> she just like killed it she was one of my favorites yes yeah. oh my god same that's amazing <laughs> The acting is great, but also, like, how the story kind of builds. I love that there's enough sort of, like, intrigue and mystery and, like, weird sort of stuff in the movie that it it just eases you into the bonkersness that happens later. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's, like, a little bit more palatable. Like, the fact that, like, no one can remember his name. I and love stuff like that. that. Like, yeah. Yeah. That detail was, like, perfect. It's so great. And it's not overdone or anything like that. When Felicia first hears that someone bought the manor and she drops all the stuff and she just starts to kind of lose it. Like, yeah. I was like, whoa, that's good. There's little bits when they start to show that they have their powers and stuff. Little things that happen that kind of cool. Like when Cher's on the phone with Suki and Suki's like telling her that somebody bought the manor and like Cher asks if it's Felicia and Clyde. She's like, is that Felicia and Clyde? And like Suki turns around and they they just enter the room she's right. like yeah but like they don't think it's weird or anything that Cher can knows that they're gonna enter a room that she can't even hear them yeah they're kind of dismissive of all the kind of interesting little details of their power mm-hmm. the first time around i watched this movie i didn't realize that they even really had power prior to jack mm-hmm. nicholson daryl mm-hmm. coming in but they totally did and they, I think that yeah. that's important. Yeah. Like when they first used their magic, I felt like it was very similar to the first time that the magic actually started to work in the craft when they got basically that guy to get run over. Yeah. You know, they all were willing it and it happened and it's the same with them. They just wanted this beach to stop and they made it rain they wanted to get out of there so yeah. they made it rain suki's the only one that is like don't you think that's weird <laughs> and everyone else is like whatever but i thought that was really cool and then when you do meet daryl for the first time he says that he was like called or like beckoned or whatever he was mm-hmm. told to go to eastwick yeah so. so i didn't know this was based on a book though because this is based on a book of the same mm. name by john updike yeah. yeah it was from 1984 so the book didn't come out too much before the movie because the movie was 87 right 87 Mm -hmm. yeah and what like i haven't read the book either but what i found and stuff i guess like the movie is a very very loose adaptation of the book right yeah i I haven't read the book either i honestly i just found out it was a book when i started doing my research here Mm -hmm. never read that before (laughs) yeah Yeah. and i guess also he wrote another book like a oh yeah sequel or something and not too long ago like maybe 2008 yeah maybe i should sit down and have a little read i don't know if i'd really be into the novel i did i did find pull a quote from a vulture article about it though mm-hmm. um it says uh in updike's novel the three women are members of an established mini coven and already have a sense of evil uh, the evil oh. they can do before they meet daryl in the film though they are just overwhelmed ladies who meet once a week for drinks relax mm. and talk about their unsatisfying sex lives the sanderson sisters of hocus pocus would probably find them way dull just by hearing that i feel like i i yeah like the movie better <laughs> yeah but, i like, yeah i think the book would be a little too serious since they're already kind of an established thing 
I don't know. There's just so much charm that comes from Pfeiffer, Sarandon, and Cher. They just are just so great to watch. Yeah. Having any sort of other interpretation might sour me, maybe. I think that the storyline is very odd because they are what makes the movie, like, amazing. Like, the storyline's cool, but I think it's only cool because of who is kind of puppeteering it. Mm -hmm. Like, the fact that Cher's in in this is, like, incredible because she's, like, Cher. (laughs) Yeah. Susan Sarandon is like a babe. They're all so babely. Yeah, and they like are. at the peak. Cher is so great in this movie. I love Cher an awful lot. And if I could pick any Cher to be, it would be like this era of Cher. This Cher. Yeah. Because she's pretty banging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like all of them are so beautiful and so talented talented and they like just bring so much to the characters like totally. of all three of them i'm not a, the hugest fan of the season Sarandon character of jane right she's kind of me but i still love her yeah i didn't understand how she she got like mean a little bit when she came into her power and i was just like dude yeah what's yeah. up like selfish very selfish she was like the weakest of all when it came to getting rid of daryl yeah. Giving him space and stuff. She was always like, oh, but man, but I want to talk to him. Stop. <laughs> okay. Um, it was interesting with um, her character, though, in this. So Susan Sarandon played Jane, mm-hmm. who, as you say, is was kind of like the most attracted to Daryl, I found. Yes. Yes, um, very much. But before that, she's kind of like this mousy, as mousy as a bombshell like Susan Sarandon can be. <laughs> Uh, exactly. <laughs> sort of like quiet I don't know teacher Has a braid. <laughs> yeah. yeah so but it was so funny because the the, the thing I kept thinking of um like every time I saw her on screen I would I think of the song touch a touch a touch me from Rocky Horror yeah and I was like this is exactly <laughs> like Janet like she goes through the same transition as her character Janet does oh, in Rocky Horror shit. it's True. like the same like sexual liberation I mean you think about Janet um and rocky horror was what 1975 i think um yeah so so That's, right it's i same. never thought of that it's the oh same my god because like what the the janet she is is in like damn it janet and like time warp compared to like when she's singing touch a touch a touch me it's just yeah. like the same story arc and character and i just oh she just does it so well and it just it was cool to see but also i got rocky horror in my head and i thought of something funny that I wanted to share about that because I just kept thinking about it. So mm-hmm. I, when I started thinking about it, I had a flashback to when I was in junior high. <laughs> um, yes. Okay, so there was a day that I had a, a friend date. I think it was a friend date. I don't think there was romantic connotations, but it was with this kid that was a year ahead of me, also in junior high. His name was Tyler, and it probably still is. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. But he was an alternative kid. This was us trying to connect because we hadn't, we weren't like, hanging out or close or anything so this was kind of like a day we're like we'll hang out yeah for our hangout i took him to a friend's house of mine in town where we congregated with a bunch of other friends of mine um yeah all from another junior high school but they were all like alternative kids and we're all rocky horror fans yeah for mine and tyler's hangout we went to this house of my friends who he didn't know and we put on Rocky Horror soundtrack and we all did like the time warp and we did all the musical dances from it and we made him participate. <laughs> and he never hung out with me again. And I forgot about that. And I was just like, I wonder I wonder what that was about. Like <laughs> was he, it- he was probably probably like oh my god why i don't know the f-ing dances like <laughs> I know, which is something i didn't consider at all i was just like no you're you, we, you you need to do this you need to do the dances from yeah the- i don't understand where people like don't immediately remember everything either like for halloween we listened to the soundtrack and stuff and i was like how do you not know every single word tall guy come on apparently it's not normal I've been I'm weird (laughs) yeah it's like that's just excuses I'm just hearing excuses they tell you (laughs) yes they tell you you get right into it time warp comes on you know what to do you jump to the left you step to the right bye Tyler (laughs) yeah yeah It, it was just kind of funny but I wonder about that sometimes I'll think about that Tyler if you're listening to this was that too much for a first hangout was the Rocky Horror moves too much? I really hope it was not enough, to be honest. <laughs> it was like, they just weren't, they weren't taking it seriously enough. <laughs> they weren't taking it seriously. <laughs> we weren't in costume. Yeah. What? Oh, what a waste. I'm going to just jump ahead to like one of the facts that I found out. I yeah. guess Cher was originally 
cast as Jane and she wanted to be Alex. But Susan Sarandon was cast as Alex. So Cher was just basically Cher and was like, no, I'm going to be Alex. So they switched the That's roles. What happens. But apparently, apparently the Internet says that they didn't tell Susan Sarandon until she showed up to start filming. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's why she was like I don't know I'll just be Janet I guess <laughs> oh, I think it was for the best yeah I don't see Cher as a ch- celloist what is uh, the name a ch- yeah what would they be called celloist ch- celloist ch- I don't know I don't know I don't, I'm not good oh. enough with classical big violin a cellist I don't know <laughs> I don't know oh cellist does that cellist. sound right I'm not looking that up I did want to point something out that I don't necessarily think was intentional and I wouldn't know because I didn't read the book and frankly I'm probably just not going to. I just feel Mm -hmm. like there's other stuff I'd rather read. Fair. But something that I did think was cool uh, was when we think of the elemental forces traditionally that come together magically are earth, air, water, and fire. Um, Mm -hmm. And we can see those kind of subtly demonstrated in in the girls, like I found. Mm -hmm. So Alex was a sculptor. So like dealing with earth, working with Mm -hmm. clay, which is literal earth, basically. And building that goddess figure and all the goddess figurines she makes. Um, It's very like earthy stuff. And and the fact that she's like a craftswoman um, Mm -hmm. is connected to like the suit of pentacles and tarot. and, And that's the element of earth. So she's just like earth. And yeah, then, and then Jane was a classic classical music musician, so like air, right, with music, just like mm-hmm. air bass. And also, I didn't realize this until after, but she also kind of flew the most. I don't know if that was intentional, but it's also very oh, air. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. And then Suki is lesser, but still um, would be the, like the water. So she was like a jam maker, but she she um, the, when they're in the pool, that's when she does a lot of her vulnerable conversation. Right. Like, we mm-hmm. have that whole scene where she talks about, mm-hmm. like, her being peculiar and liking peculiar things in life. And so, mm-hmm. and that all happens in the pool. Um, but the fire element is kind of missing. And I was like, well, I guess that the Daryl could kind of, it could be argued that he plays that role. But I think that, like, there's actual literal fire at the end, which is how they kind of get rid of him. They throw that Papa yeah. doll like, into the fire. Right. Um, so fire does play a role. It's just not within the girls but i did think it was interesting mm-hmm. that all of them kind of had this subtle callback to an element or at least all of them were present and i thought that was kind of neat i don't know if it was intentional that's kind of cool yeah i like that though yeah i thought it was kind of neat going off of that that's kind of cool to think about because they kind of have like three big moments i guess through the movie where they kind of realize the power that they have like the first one when they make it rain the second one that i can think of is they're fighting outside of Felicia's house after like the police and everything are there. They all get into this argument where they're like, we have to stop hanging out with him. And the, the earth like cracks up. Right. Yes. And also they mess with him and they have a crazy windstorm. Yes. And then they destroy yeah. the fire at the end. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I didn't even think about that, but yeah, they fight with that's each early. of those elements. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. Maybe, maybe it was intentional. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. No, I'm not sure. Yeah, I haven't (laughs) seen anything. Like, I haven't read anything about that. So, I like that little angle, though. That's cool. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. Thank you for enriching it. I totally didn't even think about that. But yeah, every one of their major, like, throwdowns has a thing. Mm. There's a couple of things that I've, like, watched this movie so many times, but I haven't noticed before. And I don't. I don't know why, <laughs> but like, again, it's like kind of cool to look back on your favorite movies with a critical eye Yeah. because I had no idea that they mentioned in the movie that the Lennox house is where there were rumors that witches were burned. Yes. I think I made a note about that. I never noticed that either until this never rewatch. Yeah. Because all I remember is there was like people just being like, oh, does he know the history of the mansion? And like, there's always like whispers and it's like, oh, it's stories, but yeah it was this time where I was like oh oh they tell you right there <laughs> yes no yeah. I um heard that this time too and I never heard it in the other in the other times I've watched this movie mm-hmm. so I thought that was pretty rad but then also this one is probably pretty embarrassing the amount of times I've watched this movie I never really really realized that Clyde kills Felicia I didn't realize <laughs> that either <laughs> Like, really I didn't, didn't realize that either. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that. Because, like, I just thought he, like, I thought they kind of forgot about his character and he just sort of pieced, like, after his wife yeah. died. Yeah. I, I didn't... thought he just, like, couldn't take it anymore and she just died. But, yeah. like, no, he straight up murders her. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's just not in it anymore? 
I guess? Or is he in well, jail? Like, like, is that the idea? See, that's the thing. That's why I was like, how did I miss this? Because not only does... They don't show it obviously happening. Yeah. yeah. But he, like... He has the great line of, like, let's call it a day. I think <laughs> he's like, let's call it a day. Yes. And you're like, oh. And you're like, why did he say that? Oh, he murdered right? her. Cool. Right. And so he, like, <laughs> walks away from her and he clearly has, like, a fire poker or something. Right. And then he just sits down and reads. And you're like, oh, this is weird. But for some reason, I never noticed it before. No, me neither. But even in the next scene where the girls show up and there's, like, police and ambulance and everything. And so he's like, I can't believe he did it. I know him. He would never do this. Never clicked in my head at all that he killed her. I was yeah. just like, oh, weird. Doop a doop. <laughs> It's like you're always getting a drink or like eating a bite of pizza in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like looking at how great Cher's hair is or something and yeah. not paying attention to the story. But no, yeah. me neither. Me neither. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That makes me feel better. I totally miss that he, uh, that Clyde killed, uh, Felicia. But speaking of Felicia and getting to my favorite scene in the movie and probably yours. Okay. The cherry spell. It's so amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> so it's so real. That stuff looks so real. Like yeah. so slimy and gross. Oh, uh, so I love that scene. I love that you called it slimy and gross because like okay, <laughs> for those people listening that have seen the movie, you totally already know what we're talking about. We're probably yeah. talking about your favorite scene too, I hope. Anyway, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> But if you haven't seen the movie, so there's this scene where the witches and Daryl are all kind of in the pool enjoying this massive bowl of cherries. Mm -hmm. The more cherries they eat separately on like the other side of town, Felicia starts puking up cherry seeds. Are they cherries? Cherry pits. Pits, yeah. Yeah, Cherry pits. So the more cherries they eat, the more she chokes and vomits and spits up cherry pits. I didn't even notice the first time around when I watched this movie that this was happening. I thought it was just like a weird, I don't know what I, what was I doing? (laughs) No, but that's the thing about this movie. I feel like there's so many things that are like just subtly done that it, you, like you, if you weren't like really honing in, you'd just be like, what is this movie doing? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Yeah. But it's so great. Cause what did you say? Slimy and gross? Like, like, and it was like the vomit. And apparently I read (sighs) some facts where it was supposed to be grosser, but test audiences thought it was too they, gross they made a life-size animatronic robot of veronica cartwright that would projectile vomit cherry puke everywhere so they filmed a bunch of scenes so someone built that they <laughs> filmed it they showed a couple of people and they were like icky gross yeah. so none of it's in the movie yeah. and it would actually like convulse and stuff and it would be like all twitchy it does sound gross don't get me yeah wrong. yeah <laughs> but, but- they pair they, like they they layer the scene so you're getting flashes of what's going on at um Clyde and Felicia's house with the cherry pit mm-hmm. puke and flashes of of what's going on at the mansion with the witches and Daryl which is like this sexy like cherry mm-hmm. eating like very sensual party atmosphere of like consuming cherries and it's just like layered and it's it's so like weird and they just do like cut to here and then cut to here oh we're puking oh we're essentially eating cherries boom 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 mm-hmm. oh it's just done so well and felicia's again veronica is like on another level in this movie oh totally yeah yeah one of my favorite little scenes and it's so weird again it's one of those weird things where i love where i'm just like oh that one little moment makes me happy when she falls down the stairs at the beginning, first of all, she has one of those whoa, 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 whoa moments <laughs> I, where her feet are like, dee, dee, dee. <laughs> I thought you were going to love that just based on your enjoyment <laughs> like of those. How I love people falling down the stairs for some reason. <laughs> yes. Yep. <laughs> you got it. But when she goes down and stuff, the way that she's fallen, it doesn't look that gross. But if you look closely like one of her legs is completely twisted around and, and there's like a bone coming out i never noticed yeah. that the first time i watched this movie right? either it's like yeah. gross but it's not gross in your face gross no and then her husband just is like felicia are you okay <laughs> and he kind of smiles a little like kind of like ah? yeah. and she just is like I think I broke my leg and adjusts her dress so she's not showing her crotch. I was like, yeah. this is such a great little moment. 
It was like, a good so moment. Good. It was a good moment. I love that scene though too because that's like when what are they doing? Like having like an after get together after a performance or something. Yeah, I think it's after Jane's performance. Right. And Daryl yeah. has just moved to town. No one can still remember mm-hmm. his name. And we're getting little snippets of conversation, just being like, I met yes. him, I can't think of his name, blah blah blah. He was in my shop. Oh, I can't recall his mm-hmm. name. Love it. And then the second they remember his name. Um, and I didn't really notice this, but I found an article where somebody references it. So I'll run for I'll credit them and reference it in the in the comments section or the description. When they remember his name, Suki's pearl snap. Yeah, and it, and it's some like analogy to like pearl clutching and like that sort of like sanctimonious vibe. Okay, I didn't notice that, but it's so cool because like it, her necklace like breaks, her pearls break mm-hmm. as soon as they all remember his name, which sets forth the motion of her fall uh felicia falling felicia falling yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ah, i just pulled my ear but <laughs> oh <laughs> really feeling it that was a really good scene like because it's probably like 15 minutes of of build up of them no one in town remembering his name and stuff yeah and so it just kind of like bubbles and bubbles and bubbles and then you get to that like pop and the pearls go everywhere yes. it's so nice The part that pulled me out of things was the CGI monster version of Jack Nicholson in his devil form or whatever. It's like the size of a house. I'm just like, what is happening? What is happening is the only ever reaction I've ever had. I've watched it so many times. It's always just, what is happening? Yeah. What choices did you make there? But I did do some reading and stuff. There was like a producer that kept showing up with like someone dressed as an alien. (laughs) Every day. He's like obsessed with adding an alien. It was just like, put an alien in it. And they're just like, no, like, stop it. <laughs> so maybe that's how they kind of were like, well, we'll put a weird alien demon. And then like once he's huge and then he's like a little worm with a tiny Jack Nicholson face. Like, I know. And he kind of looks like so a Martian. Weird. So maybe he, maybe that producer did get his way. Yeah. Like, yeah. He was like, we got to get some sort of alien weirdness in there. Cause aliens is, is whooping it at the box office. Yeah. Throw an alien so, in the background. That whole end scene for so long. It's like so many other little parts of the movie that now I'm like understanding or whatever. It's like, I've watched it so many times and I visually, my eyeballs could not compute what I was seeing. Yes. You know, no, it was just like is it big jack what and then it's like a tiny worm i know and then it's like beep. it makes like a cute little like pop I disappeared. <laughs> yeah, when it disappears like, yeah and then and then it's like at the at the very end when all of the of daryl's babies kind of are going into the the, t- mm. the tv room and they see him on the screen and he starts talking to all of his three sons Mm -hmm. The girls come in and the movie concludes with them turning him off the TV. But they look so casual. I'm like, did you know that he was coming back? I mean, are these kids like the spawn of Satan? Like, are these kids evil? Like, what is happening? So many questions. So here's the thing. I never really could decide whether he was the devil himself or a demon or like a devil. It's never made clear. Obviously, he's a bad guy. You know, yes. like he's not just a human. There's there's something supernatural about him. And he even alludes to that where he's like, I have a supernatural metabolism or whatever. Like right. sugar doesn't bother me. Oh, yeah, he does say uh, that. That's true. Yeah. But it's like never super clear if he's like the devil or a devil. You know what I mean? Because he says something when yeah. he's in the church when the girls start messing with him and stuff and he gets spit in the church. And he's talking about how that scene is amazing. Nicholson is like that's one of like the coolest scenes I've ever seen him and he's just delivering yeah and it's so great um but when he's talking about like uh was like are women a mistake did God mess up because if God makes a mistake he's like it's nature but if we make a mistake it's evil he says we make a mistake oh it's evil and I was like okay so are you just like a demony devil kind of thing right yeah I don't know it's never made explicitly clear it's just alluded to Mm. in the in the movie and um i'd be curious to know what that comes up as in the in the novel because the Mm. only time i've ever seen like any explicit mention of him being a devil is in media Mm -hmm. commentary about movies like articles they wrote about the film or reviews when it came out or like this like like summaries people have said like it's never coming Mm -hmm. from a uh, a source that doesn't just beg the question further I totally believe the last 20 minutes 
the of the movie for Nicholson, like when he actually starts to be beastie and the girls start messing with him and stuff. Yeah. Perfectly cast. Absolutely. His hair starts to like almost have little points and stuff for horns. Yeah. Slowly he just starts to lose it. Like his hand starts to change and his feet are sticking out of his shoes and stuff. Yeah. His patience is is dwindling <laughs> and so is his sort of like his human form is kind of almost like starting to slip did you notice too when he was on screen often you could hear a fly buzzing <gasps> no i just didn't know what the Watch it. i didn't know what that meant but i was like I, I noticed it over some time i was like oh there's a fly and i was like oh it's only when he's like there i don't know it's weird oh. um but he's so he I, I didn't ever really give him credit for being such a physical actor i think because i've been so like Yes. involved in the storylines but i mean like dude this is i mean squeezing a little bit of um my my boy in here like th- i feel like he it was the same in the shining you know what i mean like just <laughs> yes hard hardcore like just like that I feel like this is almost oh maybe you just your one episode i don't think you brought up stephen king in the in the craft remake one there was but... nothing i could say <laughs> <laughs> i had no notes that were <laughs> I was like, nothing Stephen Kingable in this, I don't think. Yeah. You bringing that up is really funny because I noticed I paid more attention maybe this time around watching it. Like yeah. the one scene where after he kind of uses their fears against them. And yes. Of course, Suki gets the worst of it for yeah. some reason. Yeah, she almost dies. Yeah. So Alex has to go and tell him basically like, cool it, stop your being a dick. Yeah. And that, that whole scene where he's just like ironing a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> And then he just like melts and throws stuff. And there's one little bit where he's stomping his feet and his legs are extended all along. And I was just like, whoa, Nicholson is really in this. Yeah. And I don't know why I never really, I knew he was great in it, but like sitting down to be like, hmm, I'm going to really critique this performance. I was like, he is taking up every inch of this place, this mansion. Yeah, it totally, it, it totally. And that's the thing. It totally reminded me of like the movie, The Shining. Just like how he acted in it. Because he, he was physical in that too. I just never noticed. Yeah. And of course you got the mansion thing. But he like breaks down like both. Like t- talk yeah, about the char- similar characters again. Like Susan Sarandon. But yeah. No he totally. Such a physical actor. It's insane. That was the performance I was like. I think him and Cher are trying to out act each other so right now. So good. One thing that I did notice. Was that Suki is the first one. I think it's when um, the ground breaks underneath them. I yeah. think she acknowledges that their words have power. Yeah. Because she's like, we did this. And the other two were like, no, we didn't. Like, we didn't. Felicia was murdered by her husband. Like, we had nothing to do with it. And she was like, we said this stuff. Our words have power. Yeah. And she's the first to bring it up in the beginning, too. Yeah, she's the first to be like, isn't that weird that we all thought that and then it rained? I don't really understand how the other girls got on board so quickly, but also I kind of don't care. You know, like through the movie, Suki's the only one that's like, hey, don't you find this weird? We can do stuff. And then all of a sudden they just have this crazy plan to go full tilt against Daryl. Like grab his crazy magic book and like do all of these spells and stuff. So obviously this is something that they talked about like and Off planned and stuff that yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like normally I would be upset about that and be like, hi, 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 can we have some character development here? But like for some reason it still works. It makes sense. Like I'm I'm totally okay with it. Uh again, I think that that's something that they do so well is they kind of have this playful, like, um, it almost feels musical, like how how the mm. scenes kind of go. Like um, similarly to the cherry scene, how we go back and forth. Like the scene where they're trying to defeat Daryl, he's out getting them bagels and ice cream, and the 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 back and forth dynamic of that is so lovely. Yes. So I agree. I I wasn't worried about there being any backstory with the mm. game plan for how to do that. I did pause on that book though. Uh, what was it? The Maleficio, I think it's called. Yeah, Maleficio. So that means hex in Spanish, which I thought was cool. Oh, okay. I mean, that's cool. not really. It's just an interesting thing. It was a cool. Well, that kind of like explains because again, Jane is like, "Oh, we're not gonna hurt him, right?" Like, oh yeah. <laughs> and they're like, "No, we're just gonna make him go away. Like, stop being such a sissy." Yeah. So it's like, like yeah, that makes sense. It's not like a like a devil book it's just like just put a quick little hex just throw a couple hexes it's cool it's cool you're good the the real kind of 
notations that I made. I, I, I added that thing about the book being called the Hex. I, it was just kind of an interesting thing, like I said. But, mm. um, I mean, it was kind of teen witchy in that we just had the Poppet doll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? um, so, uh, like I mentioned in the Teen Witch uh, episode, it was like sympathetic magic. Sympathetic magic is when you take the concept of someone, just in case you haven't listened to our Teen Witch episode, which you should because it's it's one of my favorites, I'd say, honestly. <laughs> so sympathetic magic is the concept that someone can magically be affected by the use of something that's representative of them. So they took his hair and they took his underwear, too. I, you saw like the... Oh, the, right. Yeah. The waistbands, which is so gross in the pot. And a picture yeah, of him. That. Yeah. And they lit it on fire. I don't know. Um, so, yeah. And the Papa doll. So, it was very Teen Witch in that. Um, mm-hmm. that. But one, the thing that I found the most interesting was when he, when Daryl goes to have tea with Jane. And I think that's when she mentions the history of the house. Yeah. To yeah. Him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so, I can't remember what his line is, but he talks about how women were accused of witchcraft as a way for doctors to kind of say that they weren't of value or, or were lying or charlatans or something like that. Mm-hmm. I can't remember exactly what he said, but that's also true. There's a book that I have in, in my collection that I've read. Oh, Witches, Let's Feminists, Conjuring the Sex Positive by Kristen J. Soleil. So she writes in, in this book, During the witch hunting era, the female figure most intimately acquainted with sex, birth, and fertility was the midwife. Armed with knowledge of herbology, biology, and in particular reproductive health, these predominantly mm-hmm. poor peasant women were easy targets for accusations of sorcery. And she also said, historians also debate how much of denigration of midwives was based in real fear of their supposed black magic capabilities or if it was merely a smokescreen for acute gender bias so so he mm-hmm. like he's so daryl yeah. was correct last she quotes in her book um she quotes carol f carlson who was an american historian and she authored a book the devil in the shape of a woman she quotes carol Carlson and she says the frequency with which doctors were involved in witchcraft cases suggests that one of the unspoken and probably unacknowledged functions of New England witchcraft was to discredit women's medical knowledge in favor of their male counterparts so there's like a lot going Mm -hmm. on there that was true yeah yeah no I was really stoked we end up doing this movie for sure it's so great I just love the friendship dynamic and everything is so great and like really believable the first night you see them they have their Thursday night drinks just like it flows so easily it's so believable it's just so charming and nice it makes me it makes me be like oh I wish I I wish I was more of a person that would do stuff like that yeah me (laughs) too I hear you not (laughs) I know I get a craving for that like um a lot and and it makes it, it this film did really totally make me um think about like how female friendship is super important and and i had a i'm not explaining that well but i had a lot of emotions about that (laughs) yeah no same that's probably like my favorite share scene i think it's mostly her outfit her outfit is great in that she's wearing like a crop top shirt, I think, with sweatpants and cowboy boots. It's oh, like... she looks so good in it. I re- you I do that. you. Yeah, I liked it. It was a good yeah. mix. So I was just like, I don't know what's happening, but I love it. It's yeah. delicious. Everything I read about this movie online, I was just like, it seems like it was a nightmare to work on. Like, it seems like it was just a bummer all around for everyone. <laughs> oh, yeah, because what the director, George Miller, just basically, like, admitted that he didn't know what he was doing because <laughs> he'd only made Bad Max. And he was like, he didn't know how Hollywood worked. What are this? <laughs> yeah, he was like, mm. <laughs> he volunteered to send his trailer back because he was like let's reduce costs and stuff and he was like i should be on set anyway and they were like cool we'll take your trailer and then they were like also we're just gonna assume you're a pushover and not give you anything you want he'll be like can we have 50 extras and they'll be like you can have 12 yeah you wonder what's up with that it's like they're just being dicks like that that producer that wanted the alien made sure that guy was there (laughs) like i didn't even ask for this (laughs) what leave me alone I just wish I could see what that alien looked like. You know? I know. Like, and what what did he say to be like, it'll be super easy. We'll just shoot this one scene and in the background. <laughs> like, well, how do you meld that into this movie? I know. It it would make no sense. It would make no sense. I'm so glad that they didn't. But maybe, but they do have that. <laughs> but that Jack Nicholson, like, devil reveal at the end is just so strange. 
over the top. I feel like maybe yeah. that, that might have been the negotiation. So we'll be like, we'll make him look like a Martian, sort of, right before he pops out of the screen forever. One thing that I didn't notice the, f- the first time around was he has that whole conversation with Alex, who shares character. He buys all of her goddess figurines that she yeah, creates. Yes. And yeah. they're just like talking back and forth when she first meets him and he says that he bought them. And he's like, no, you have to do bigger scale. You have to make mm-hmm. them greater. And then there's that mm-hmm. scene when Suki comes to her house and you can see that she's working on a giant sculpture of a one outside. A giant one. Like bigger than yes. her. Yeah. Which is awesome. It's so cool to see. But I've seen that before and been like, isn't her house on stilts? <laughs> it's like isn't her house on stilts on water just not gonna work and also it's bigger than the door yeah i that, don't know how it how works how are you getting that out <laughs> yeah. I know. but yeah i do love it because yeah obviously he gets under her skin and like does affect her to the point where she changes her approach to creating but yeah watching it was like yeah, that part of the house would definitely fall oh totally totally <laughs> i just never noticed it it's subtle they don't bring it up you just see it in the back Background. See, like that's why I love this movie so much. It's yeah. just it no, it doesn't hit you over the head with anything. It just takes you on a weird little ride. Thank you for joining us on episode seven of the Coven Slumber Party. If you are new to the podcast and listening on iTunes, Spotify, or Stitcher, welcome. We are happy to have you as part of the Coven. No initiation required, but we would appreciate if you could leave us a review or subscribe. We drop an episode monthly, so if you have a witchy piece of media that you'd love for us to cover in a future episode of the Coven Slumber Party, let us know at points if it's something you could have found on VHS at Blockbuster Video in 1998. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you can email us at thecovenslumberparty at gmail com for that and also next time you bring the pizza next episode will be in 2021 oh my god that's wild right that's um, crazy it's so crazy i know we're both really excited about our february valentine's episode so stay stay tuned for that it's been in the making <laughs> yeah but thank you for listening and allowing us to be part of your night or day depending on when you're listening to this just know that you allow me and Ray to live out our dream of both being Christian Slater from Pump Up the Volume, and we're very grateful for that. <laughs> oh my god, shit, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so no matter what holiday you're celebrating this time of year or what the holiday season looks like for you, we are wishing you joy and magic and a damn fine cup of coffee. Yeah.